Good afternoon to everyone. I'm Marika Scala, a PhD student at the University of Trento. And today I'm going to talk uh, about the characterization of substrate-borne vibrational communication in Magradi Laris. And this will be the outline that I will follow for today's presentation. Bagradi Laris is an emitter up entotomid originated from temperate regions of Africa, India, Middle East, commonly named as painted bug. This species reported principally on brassica crops, but it presents a wider range consisting of crops, weeds, and ornamentals. It preferentially feeds on a young tender leaf tissue, and the damage is characterized by circular or star-shaped chlorotic lesions that may become necrotic. And when in presence of uh, optimal condition, it is able to accomplish 10 generation per year. As invasive species, we can find Bagradelaris in Italy, specifically in Parentelleri Island, where it attacks scaffold plants, and in North America, where it's becoming a major pest of brassica crop. In these places, the production of organic crops has become extremely difficult because there are no effective biological control or non-chemical solutions. The courtship and mating behavior was already described. Short-range recognition and courtship consists of three consecutive steps. That are the first is the contact phase, in which a male first contacts a female and antenates on her body. The second is the mount phase, in which the male mounts the female antenating the genitalia. And the third and final stage is the engagement phase, in which mating takes place. Courtship behavior may last seconds to minutes, while copulation may last several hours. The female deposits single eggs or small groups directly into the soil, with an egg production that could reach 200 eggs. The recognition and courtship behavior appear to, be, appear to be mediated in close proximity by cues such as visual, acoustic, and or contact pheromones. So the aim of this study, this study was to characterize the vibrational communication that are involved in triggering the courtship behavior and mediate the very early stage of courtship leading to mating. For this purpose, the vibrational signals of adult males and females were recorded using two different substrates that were a beam plant, Fasolus vulgaris, and a loudspeaker membrane, both placed inside a plexical cage in an isolated chamber. The recordings were done using single individuals of both sexes first in order to detect the possible sex specific signals, and then with the aim to determine the vibrational communication that is involved before or during courtship. Recordings were carried out using specimens of both sexes paired together. The individuals uh, used for the trials were separated just after becoming adults in order to avoid any contact with the opposite sex. Therefore, there were adults that were kept from copulation for the purpose of this experiment. With the use of a plant as a substrate, two lasers were used, one pointed on each leaf, ensuring the signal detection. While for the membrane substrate, a petri dish was placed above in order to avoid insect escape, and the two lasers were pointed directly on the membrane and on the petri surface. The trial with the use of a plant as a substrate were recorded with a video camera for the behavioral analysis. The sound recordings were performed with BK software, while with the use of Raven, we analyzed different parameters such as the duration, the dominant frequency, peak frequency, and amplitude. And since Bagradelaris uh, is a, a gregarious species, we wanted to analyze the correlation between cumulative walking time and number of calls uh, in order to try to understand the meaning behind those. We identified three types of vibrational signals with a modulated harmonic frequency structure. A male and female signals that take place before the contact phase, and a mating signal that takes place after the contact phase and during the mount and engagement phase. The main signal is emitted while the insect flaps the wings, as you can see from the video. 
The duration mean is more or less one second, depending on the substrate, with a dominant frequency regist that registered the slight differences in terms of the substrate. Indeed, the mean was 130 Hz for the plants and 144 Hz for the membrane with a slight decrease in modulation. Also, in the case of the female, the sound is emitted while the insect flaps the wings. <laughs> with a duration of less than one second and dominant frequency of 130 Hz for both substrates, with again a slight decrease in modulation. The mating signal is produced by the male during the mount phase and engagement phase, right before the mating occurs. In this case, the sound is produced with a dominal part. <laughs> It is characterized by a continuous repetition and therefore the signals emitted in chain with a repetition time between 0.6 and 36 seconds were considered a train. The dominant frequency mean differed between substrate but did not exceed 160 Hz. For the behavioral analysis, we divided the couples who have achieved the mating from those who have not. In this way, we were able to delineate the presence of uh, some recurring behavioral pattern that may or may not lead to mating. The present scheme shows the behavior of those couples who have not achieved the final purpose, that is, the mating. We can say that there is no statistical significant transition between different phases, and we distinguish four main behaviors that are the male and the female making the signals, but also other two, be two behaviors that are the opening wings without emission of the signals by both the male and the female. We don't know yet the meaning behind this. They could be used as visual cues or could be related uh, to volatile production. Taking a look at the etogram for mated couples, we highlighted in the box the transition in common with the previous scheme for the unmated insects. The thick lines indicate statistical significant transition, and it seems that the signal of the male and the female opening wings can lead to a clear beginning of a, of a partner that starts with a contact phase. Two cases can occur after the contacts. The distancing of one of the two individuals, but only rare case, or with a higher statistical significant probability, they transition to a mood phase. Usually in this position, there is the production of the mating signals, which then leads to the mating attempt. When the attempt is failed, there is a return to the mount phase, but in most cases, population is achieved, followed by the production of the mating signals. In the working behavior analysis, we found that working has a significant correlation with the callings, but only in the female. We can see that the male that tend to make more calls move less compared to those that work more. However, the same trend is not present for the males. In conclusion, the take home messages are that the female and the male are able to produce signals, but this seems unrelated to courtship and mating. Therefore, we need to understand the meaning behind this. The male produces the mating signals only after the contact phase, and this could be used as a sort of acceptance signal for the female. The behavioral analysis, as we saw previously in the etograms, highlighted that there is no clear pattern in the couples who don't, would not achieve the contact phase, while after the contact, there is a higher probability to reach the mating. But we still don't know the meaning behind the opening wings without the mission of signal. For the working behavior, we saw that the female tends to move less when the number of calls is higher, but we need to understand why. It is clear that there are a lot of open questions that need further investigation. We are characterized for the first time the signal emitted by Bagradelaudis, but further analysis is required in order to try to understand better the behavior of this species and to use this knowledge in our favor to development uh, future control strategies. In the end, I would like to thank the co-authors and the colleagues who helped me uh, making this work possible. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have some here. <laughs>